I'm, I'm in, in a big problem. <laughs> you destroyed my my. Um, yes, now I'm standing from too high. <laughs> um, my name is Igal Rotem. I'm the co-founder of um, um, a startup company that um, became a public company that was sold eventually called Power Design. Um, I have a presentation that we can go through uh, very quickly. Um, but let me let me add um, one element, which I think some of you may know, which is called luck. <laughs> so we are negotiating um, a deal. Let, let me let me take a step back. Power Design filed um, an F1 in 2000 to go public around. Um, August, July time frame. Um, the leading banks were uh, DLJ, Piper Jeffries, um, and um, Dane Rush Wessels. We completed everything. The filing was clean. We got the clearance from the SEC. We we're just about to go to the roadshow. And DLJ were acquired by Credit Suisse for, I think, $11 billion. In two weeks, all the research analysts, the bankers, the people that worked on our deal were gone from, from the firm and gone from our, our transaction. I met uh, Credit Suisse, they said, no problem, we'll take you public. After one hour, I realized that it's, gonna, it's not going to happen. The market started to crash, and um, I'm finding myself at the end of 2000, practically with no money. We hired a bank called Robinson Stevens, the late Robinson Stevens, um, year 2001. I'm meeting with investors on Monday. The guys laid off on Thursday. Um, after, I think, three months, and by the way, all our financing round from start to money in the bank took no more than eight weeks. I realized that uh, we're not going to see money from the US. We go to Europe. We were, I think, lucky uh, meeting Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank was relatively a new VC, was less harmed by, by the uh, crash, and um, gave us an offer for um, 30 million euros. To make a very long story short, horrible due diligence, British people with German mentality, <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, you know, at a certain point in time, they had more people doing the diligence on the company than, than employees that I had, really. Um, and we made, the, everything was, was cleared, finalized, and, 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 and negotiated a few times. And then we um, scheduled uh, uh, the signing of, uh, of the agreement um, and, and the lawyers prepare all the documents to be signed. It was September 11th, 5 p.m. Israel time. So how much luck can you get? You go to an IPO, your banker is, is being acquired. You finally get an investor, and the investor is almost going to, uh, uh, to meet his, his creator. Um, and, um, and, and the lady that w had the power of attorney to sign the agreement called me said I, I, I got a, a crazy phone call from, uh, from my boss. He is, uh, he is an, an Deutsche Bank building near, near the uh, World Trade Center and I'm taking uh, the hell out of Israel. Don't worry, I'll get to Rome. You'll get the signature pages signed. It will be fine. Never, never got the signature pages that day or not a few weeks thereafter. Eventually, four weeks, um, we, we renegotiated with slight weeks, uh, we finalized the, uh, the deal. So sometimes you need luck. Okay, a few, uh, few words about power design. Uh, the company was established in 1995. Uh, two co-founders uh, with some background and some experience in high tech. Um, and, and by the way, we were both very lucky to do something which is, I think, quite unique. We founded the company. We, we, we stayed as, ma as management throughout 
uh, its entire life. Um, I did all the, the financing of the company, five, t five rounds, um, took the company public, you know, four eventually, and uh, sold the company as a public company in a public-to-public -public, uh, transaction in, in 2006. Um, uh, when we sold the company, the company uh, was selling uh, for $40 million. The company um, will do this year over $60 million. Um, and I'm very proud to say that it, this, it is the most profitable piece of the entire uh, micro semi organization, uh, doing 37.5% uh, EBITDA. And I'm saying that because one of, one of the things that, that is so important for me personally is that an acquisition, and I think you, you need to remember that, a, a good acquisition doesn't end by signing the documents and getting the check. You, you test, you measure good acquisitions years after. Two years after the acquisition, I'm still part of Power, of Power Design Micro Semi. I don't hold an official uh, position there because I don't think that, that the future of the company is with me, but I'm there to make sure that this will be a great acquisition for both parties. When Micro Semi bought Power Design, uh, Micro Semi uh, stock was around $18. It hit um, almost $30 a few weeks ago, and, and with a lot uh, related to power design um, contribution. And I think that this is uh, a, a criteria that, that each one of you guys that uh, hopefully will, will, will be fortunate to sell his, uh, his venture uh, needs to remember. Um, in a nutshell, we do power over Ethernet. It's a market that, uh, that we created. Uh, we, we own the IP um, and, and uh, we became the market leader, uh, not just through technology but also business. Practically every major company in telecommunication, data communication um, was, was uh, our customer, including this small company. So how the, the whole thing started? We, we are uh, in a joint venture and, and, um, and partnership. The first customer that we have was Telrad. And again, some of you may know that um, I negotiated the deal with, with uh, Telrad in '95 in and practically enabled the company to, 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 to start its, its business. Um, and Telrad took a very brave decision, I must say, to deal with small company. I was very fortunate that no one at Telrad asked me ever how many people are working at Power Design? Because in 1995 we were two and a half employees. And they didn't ask, and I, and I haven't said the number of employees because they didn't ask. But one day I'm getting a phone call, look, we're coming to do an audit. I said, what the hell is audit all about? I said, well, we are going to check uh, the manufacturing to see if you have uh, processes in the company. We are going to submit significant orders. And I was panicking. Um, one of the things we did in order to um, make Telrad the thing that we, we, we have many employees, I bought shirts with Power Design logo to all the people in our floor, including Butterfly Communication that uh, some of you may, may know. Um, and I told them, look, you are not Power Design employees, but this is my gift for the day. If, you will, if they will ask you, you will say that you are not working for Power Design, but uh, uh, the, uh, the bottom line was that uh, they, they, um, they realized that, that we are a very small company, but we are using subcontractors, and, and it, was, it was fine because they really needed Power Design. Uh, we signed a $2.5 million um, contract with them. Um, 1999, Power Design reinventing itself with, with uh, uh, DSL products, and um, and we meet, uh, we go straight to to the giants. One of um, my my best advice is deal with the market leader. Don't be afraid. If you won't deal with the market leader, you get tons of promises and no business. Um, we eventually succeeded to persuade Paragain. That um, that we own the best the best uh, um, components in the market. Uh, back then, uh, we had a fantastic agreement. Uh, the company almost went bankrupt. Not Paragon, Power Design, because 
our quality assurance was not good enough. And although um, in my background I came from from um, from Chelmudin uh, and 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 we thought that we know how to design things that will uh, last forever. What I didn't realize is that when you ship hundreds of thousands of modules, even one percent, these are a lot of modules that go wrong. And for giant company, this is far more than they can tolerate. Eventually it was fixed. Um, 2001, the company is reinventing itself and we make a decision that we want to became, become a, um, an IC company. Again, we made the decision that we are going to um, partner with the best possible technology that there is in the market back then, uh, Motorola Semiconductor or Freescale. Um, had and still have the best mixed signal technology, high voltage uh, in the market. Um, major, major issue to deal with a company that have their own product. They want to get your product and put this product into their um, website, into their um, price list in order to sell the product to their own customers. If they will do that, no one ever, no one ever will buy from a small company. Because one thing you, you need to understand, no one want to, wants to deal with small company. And unfortunately, I'm, and I'm, in some cases I'm, I'm, I'm advising VCs and I'm, and I'm doing the diligence on, on small companies and people are saying to me, look, we're going to sell to this company, this company, and this company, and we have much better product and it's cheaper and, and it's, more, uh, it's more innovative. But I'm saying, guys, you don't understand what is happening in the market. Cisco today, will not buy from a company like Power Design, even if Power Design will give Cisco its ICs for zero. Because they made the decision a few years back that from 2,500 um, suppliers, by the end of this decade, they will have less than 200. And they are going to reach this number even lower. Which means, if you are a one-trick pony, you will not sell to these people, period no matter what kind of technology you offer them. And you need to understand that. So for us to try to sell to mid-market and then hopefully to be so important and have such a strong IP position to be able to sell to the giants was critical. Few um, advice along the way. Please do remember this sentence, the bottom line. Business is being done between people. So you have to have the right team on the, from, from the other side of the table. If you don't have trust and if you don't have a real champion, someone who can deliver on the other side, you're always in your time. Um, I think one of the, the, the most important advice that I can, I can say in respect to uh, power design um, history and experience is the IP. We were fortunate to understand the importance of IP early in, in the game. Um, and I took, I don't know if a stupid or brave decision that we're going to put a lot of money into it and I've hired an IP editor to the company because using an external uh, law firm was far too expensive and not efficient. In three years, we have generated patents more than many of the big uh, tech uh, companies in Israel. And the reason for that is, if you are small, many times IP is the only thing that you have when you're negotiating with the big companies. Um, two years before we were acquired, um, uh, we have em embarked on a litigation campaign. Litigation in the US for an IP, and correct me, um, gentlemen, if I'm wrong, $5 million, that's the beginning of the journey. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong, maybe this is $10 million today. Okay. <laughs> um, realizing that, I've hired another guy who is an IP um, litigator to become a Power Design employee in order to make it extremely efficient in-house process. We have litigated six times, including Texas Instruments. All these litigations, came to settlement within less than six months. 
after the other side realized, I can litigate forever because I'm paying salary and I'm not paying millions. You have to have a strong IP position to do that. We felt that we, we do have a strong IP position to do that. Thank you. Question. Ah, thank you.